Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Nearly Senior Status in here for these boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends, and welcome to this a brand new day. And remember, no matter who you are, you are valid. Pokey smokes. Brand new day indeed. It is warm outside. When I went out for a walk, he is, which is somewhere between two and a half, three miles on these walks. When I went out on the walk, it was gray, but there was some wind and so with no stale or stagnant air very windy in the area that i live in and so it was a nice walk but warm and it's going to get hotter and hotter it's not going to go way up into the 90s or anything it got super hot yesterday when i went to bed last night midnight i went outside so i could check the weather it was almost too warm to wear a t-shirt out Outside at midnight. Oh boy. So it's not supposed to be that bad today. Thumbs up for that. I, of course, am still having insomnia problems. <coughs> I just never sleep well. I take melatonin gummies. They're five milligram gummies. You're supposed to take two. I generally take, I start off with two. Then I started to take three. One of the people that works here, a caseworker, she actually takes two 10 milligram gummies when she sleeps. So some days I take four, but you know what happens? What the difference is between this number and this number of gummies? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Whether I take two or I take four, I get tired. I fall asleep around one o'clock-ish. And at 6, I'm ready to get up. But at least I'm falling asleep around 1-ish. It used to be a struggle and a fight, maybe around 2 or 3. And then wake up around 4 or 5. So I, I'm doing a lot better. Melatonin, you know, if your brain doesn't make it, you got to get it somehow. I imagine my brain makes it, but my whole brain is a mess. And I've been having falling into coma problems today. Oh, I was asleep in my chair over there watching the videos for quite some time. It is, of course, I have cups in front of my, my clock, so I cannot immediately see what time it is. It's after one o'clock. <laughs> I always put things in front of the clock so that wherever I am, it's blocked. I'm quite sure at a different angle it'd be fine. Anyway, though, it's uh, yeah, I've fallen, fallen asleep, but then all of a sudden, <clears throat> I just went, you know what? I need to get up and do stuff. And then I just got up and started to do stuff. Whereas I've been asleep for all that time. Ugh, my heel. I have bone spurs on my right heel, and it sucks. But then I've had bone spurs on my right heel since I was a kid. One of my very, very few memories of when I was before age 15 was, is I had to have been in second or third grade, if even that much. And I couldn't do PE stuff, physical education, because it was hard to walk. My heel hurt like it hurts right now. <clears throat> I have had actual bone spur issues my entire life because they bothered me as a kid and then they stopped. And then I got older and I hit right around in when I was in the military. Good golly, Miss Molly. <clears throat> and I dealt with bone spurs not all that well. But I had special combat boots and special shoes with ripple soles, which is just a whole bunch of, like, well, and it's like jagged, but the jagged is just that little rubber edges, little blades. So you have a bunch of little blades on your shoes, and you walk on those. And then, oh, I got a little bug. Great. And then there is the... They're wedges so that it raises your heel up a little bit more inside of your shoe. 
Now the boots that I've been wearing do restrict some of my movement on my heel so that's been working quite well but also I've been going out less because my knee has been hurting more. My he knee has been hurting less lately so now now I'm walking more and I've been walking across fields and now my heel is killing me again and I am going to make a quick because I think that little bug a fly in there was one of them mosquitoes and they're hard to see for me especially because I've got stuff over here <clears throat> and I've got a million floaties in all my vision it is absolutely impossible every time I'm just sitting here there's movement everywhere because I got floaters in my vision I'm gonna spray my my knees here again I got a little insect repellent in the air and on my knees because oh I tell you on my right knee I have healing marks for about eight to ten mosquito bites ah and it's only there and they don't happen all in the day of course it'll be two days I'll get two mosquito bites and then two days pass and then I get a mosquito bite and then three days pass and then I get a mosquito bite so they're healing and they're not always bothering me but it bugs me and then that irritation goes away and then I relax and forget and then suddenly I got one to take care of and then uh, and of course these being habitat for humanity put together mostly by volunteer type housing places they're not greatly sealed my door there's a lot of daylight that comes through around the edges so a lot of insects get in luckily it's light outside problem is of course it's light outside and we're right my door is right there so there's light going boom right on the front of my building thus going on to the door of my apartment we have outdoor lights we can flick on you can't even tell when you flick on your outside light when you're on the front of the building because there are street lights right outside each one of our cottages here and they are bright I have to tape my curtains to my windows and light too much light still gets in Ugh. now ADD and ADHD still makes it impossible for me to focus but I remember to talk about this because I went and raised a ruckus down at the post office because they had well on this they said they had delivered my meds to me on the 6th but they hadn't I hadn't gotten them so at the beginning of this week I went in with my tracking information for it and said I didn't get this stuff we need to figure that out end of that day they said have you checked your mailbox yet your mail has been delivered to you so they located it from the delivery and then put it in my box for me to pick up now one of the things that could have happened is maybe it was just placed into the wrong box in our bank of mailboxes in which case my medicine which is just a normal medication but are still supposed to be stored in a cool dry place has been sitting for two weeks in a metal box in the sun and it's been hot now of course does that mean my pills have turned into into poison if they have been doing that no pills have a shelf life because they slowly degrade and become less effective over time storing them improperly like in heat is just going to decrease the shelf life as they degrade quicker are they going to be damaged enough to make them useless likely no I bet they're fine I'm taking them they're my ADD slash ADHD meds which of course is Wilbutrin slash generic Buprion 
which is also an antidepressant. I've been on it for a while, and so coming off of the cold turkey at the beginning of the month, and only now, halfway through the month, going back on it, I don't know if the, a bug flew on my hair and got me, because again, we have too many openings, and there's the seam on, I have a seam on the floor of this place that has a distance of this much that's just open. I don't know what's underneath the, the place here, but it's open on my floor. <sighs> ADHD. There we are. So I'm back on the meds and so it takes a while for the effect to wear off so I'm going to be bottoming out here soon while the med is going to be going okay let's try and yank you back up. So I'm gonna go here pretty soon and that's gonna be fun. <laughs> life is life, but hopefully I'll be able to at least pay attention to the world and focus a little bit better. I have felt it. It has felt like I have been in, just injected with something that makes it impossible to think. It has felt bad inside of my head. So maybe that's because of the lack of the ADHD med. So I, well, of course it is, but it's felt not good. So now at least, yay. So thumbs up on that. <sighs> what else do I have down here on my list? Does this? One of them is, well, in fact, this one, I, I had stopped talking about them, but now I'm going to talk about them again. I'm not going to rave like I have been and such like that, but I'm going to talk about Electric Callboy. And I was watching a video about older videos and old thing and changing with the times, and how there's one person that their videos might still be available online, but the difference. The Electric Callboy, the band, whom they used to call themselves Eskimo Callboy. But they've been around since like 2010. And they, earlier in their career, they lost one of their band members. I think it was a drummer. And it was replaced. And then, 2019, maybe-ish? I can't remember the exact time. The lead singer quit to go off and start their own project. That's when they got Nico Salek. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. S-A-L-L-C-H. If it's straight German, that would be more Zalach. So that's when he auditioned for the group to be the singer and was accepted. <clears throat> Things changed radically for the group at that point, it seemed. Because from, all, from then all the way up till they got Nico in the group, they were Eskimo Callboy. And then they started to scrub that and change their name to Electric Callboy because Eskimo is an offensive term. And they voluntarily changed their image and then not only that, had been doing their best to go and change, alter, and scrub all of the stuff in their past videos as well as just scrubbing their videos and their playlists and all that for videos where the humor and such didn't age well, so they're getting rid of it. I was watching a video about a bunch of older YouTubers where their awful stuff was just, uh, well, you know, homophobia and all that was edgelord funny, so that's what people did videos about, just awful stuff. And you can see these people that even though they've changed, they leave everything still up there. Now, what's better? To leave your record of change, but still have the stuff that's really problematic still up and available? Or is it better to go, you know, the stuff we did it didn't age well. Let's get rid of it. I'm not sure, but I respect that they've decided this stuff was offensive. We need to change. 
And so that's what they did. Plus, they started to really do things like Hypa Hypa, which got them on the map. It was just a big, major change. And it's odd that it all happened at that time. I don't understand what happened internally that they made such a massive internal change just by changing uh, the lead singer. I'd have no real desire to go back and see their pre Nico material. So I don't want to see what Kev, you know, the. He does death metal, the death metal stuff. I have no real desire to see what he did and sounded like and what the others did and sounded like before Nico was there. Just like with the group, even though the fellow's dead now. Uh, God, what is the name of it, of course? Type O Negative. I really like the band Type O Negative's release Bloody Kisses. Oh my God, I love that album even now. I don't like any of the other stuff, and once I heard one of their pre that album stuff, it was like, okay, that's fine. I don't care about it. I have no real desire to hear it. I'm done. So thumbs up on that. And I am very tired. And I feel goofy inside of my head from lack of sleep. And I only, this is only the second day getting back onto Buprion. So I am mega unfocused. I feel that every day ever since. Well, it started the day that I started going cold turkey. And has just continued and gotten worse. So hopefully it's going to bump back up pretty quick. That would be nice. I have also, of course, been thinking on the whole solo RPG material, and not just in a solo RPG material way, but also in a storytelling fashion. Because I've talked about in the setting, you know, it going on solo RPG stuff, like in if I play it in a four against darkness kind of way, you take four people into the into the dungeon. I've run a couple of those for the channel here where I become semi-invested in the characters. There's Connor and then I can't remember the names of the others but there's one of the Dwaylin which is effectively you know we would call it an elf and then there's an Elvandry what we, we would call it a dwarf and then there's a hob who's like a, we, we would call like a hobgoblin but except they're not and I've gone real grown to all of these characters and the setting to the point that I'm actually working on it now as also a fiction setting to write stories about. And so that's a good thing. One of the things I try to think about is difficult. With my neurodiversity, there's stuff that I just don't like to think about or talk about. Various base human needs and functions. I don't like it. It even goes to the point I actually don't like eating. I personally don't like to eat food. I don't, it's, it's ugh. Everything is about that sort of thing is base. I don't like it. I can flick a switch in mental switch in my head where it's like, okay, I'm ready to eat. Sometimes that is really hard to flick. Other base urges of the body, like if you need to seek out a partner or to go it solo, I got the switch in my head where it's like, I don't, I, ugh, that stuff is, I don't even like to think about it. I don't like jokes. I don't want to see it in, in anything I'm doing. Unless I can flick that switch in my head, I had my wife who was able to turn that switch from off to on for me. And so we took care of business that way. I still have two adult children now. So home is up for that. Now if I can remember where I was going. <laughs> Which I can't. It's just meh. 
the story with it. Yeah, I think about the various things. There we go. And one of the things that I've thought about both in this setting and a different setting is uh, the stuff that I don't like to think about, like uh, getting frisky. Except that flicking a switch in my head can turn that part on. And getting frisky, of course, being the euphemism for bedroom acrobatics so that I don't get demonetized by talking about this sort of stuff. Because the peoples of the solo RPG setting I'm talking about have hang-ups that we don't have. And we have hang-ups that they don't have. Now, what hang-ups do they have that I that we don't have? You know, specifically maybe me. And the answer is, I got no ideas. That is of the extremely tiny minutia that is you use a little tiny, tiny paintbrush to do the little, little tiny bits of fine work that if I'm involved too much in this, I'm paying no attention to the big outer picture, and that's kind of more important. Understanding that they got hang-ups that I don't know about, I figure is, okay, that's good. So they got hang-ups that we don't have, we got hang-ups that they don't have, and they've got a whole bunch of different speciation where they are not uh, reproductively compatible. Even among the, uh, the Hulat, with the Orkani, the Habani, and the Apani, they are all three intelligent races that are speciated from the same, but they are not reproductively viable. Especially amongst these people on the continent of Karthkog, where they had to practice strict population control, it was an extremely uh, pushed to, uh, when you feel frisky, if you're in Orkani, you got two other species. Go there and see if you got someone who wants to have fun. Same with the others. If you're a Doylan, go visit one of the other species. If you're one of the Goya, which is us, go visit one of the other species. Now that means, in practical terms, of course, that if you are like one of the Goya and you've your parents immigrated up onto the continent of Lanluva because there's uh, like a one percent of the population of the continent of Lanluva where the Dwelin are is immigrated other species like the humans and the el the doors and all that. If your culture says it is absolutely a okay and fine that if you're feeling frisky, go seek out the other species. Under practical terms, if you wanted to, as one of these other species, say a human being, if you wanted to spend the rest of your life getting frisky with just the Dwellin, you could spend the rest of your life in bed and never run out of Dwellin ready at your door to take their place. you would be inundated now because this is the continents and the people of this world well, the continents are but the people of this world follow a more us and them overlaid on the top of us versus them they are more of one village the other village instead of we need to get all the resources before the other village does so that we don't starve with no care for whether or not the other village starves on this world, on top of that, is overlaid. We need to make sure that both villages get enough resources that we all survive. So no one's going to be pushy. If you, as a Goya, say, I'm not interested in that, word will get out and you will never be bothered. You have to make your intent known. Then you would possibly spend the rest of your life on your back or on your knees and hands or on your, well, you know what I mean. So, yeah, it's, again, not something that I like to think about, but also I like to make the world as much of a living world as possible. 
and that means you think about things that you may not want to think about and again it's my neurodivergence that makes me not like this stuff again it's like with eating when I watch people that are eating and they're eating sloppily and getting food on their face oh my god it is torture just watching it I can oh it is I can feel my skin start to crawl and my flesh wants to just melt off my bones so that it can get away it is the worst thing in the world Except, of course, there are other things that are the worst things in the world, which, of course, like if I put a shirt on, oh, bone could crack. If I put a shirt on over the top of this one, and then this shirt folds like this underneath the shirt on top, this folded wrinkled cloth held against my body will be the worst form of human torture imaginable. Again, my skin will crawl off of my body. My flesh will melt off my bones just to get away from it. It is torture until I can get it all cleared up. So yeah, I don't like thinking about some things. But I want to make it a living, breathing world. So I think about that stuff. So yeah, if you're one of the other species and you wanted to make your job just a... Uh, being a bedroom person, you could. Thumbs up for that. And I, again, I'm just using euphemisms so that I don't get demonetized trying to talk about this stuff. If I would, if I could, and not get demonetized, I would be using much more proper terms instead of having to, you know, dance around the subject. <sighs> Thumbs up for that. Anyway, though, I'm almost a half hour yammering. This is going to take forever to upload, so thumbs up and thank you. If you're a Patreon patron and you're still watching, thumbs up and thank you. Well, even if you're not watching but you watch another day, or even if you don't, hopefully spiritually know that you are a beautiful and awesome person. Thumbs up and thank you so very much. If you have watched this far, if you could write the words hi on into the comments that would be very very cool to let both me and the youtube algorithm know that you have watched this far and if you've left me a comment thumbs up and thank you it is appreciated greatly 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 i read as many comments as youtube will put in front of my face because it doesn't put them all in oy vey but that's another day but i read as many as i can find and i thumb us up that wasn't even English. I thumbs up and heart as many as possible. So thank you so very much. It is appreciated. And with the awesome computer that while I have issues with is still an awesome piece of machinery and I am extremely appreciative to have, I have a keyboard that I can type with. So I've been answering more comments as best I can. So thumbs up and thank you. So until we meet again. You take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side. And that is indeed a very good thing. So yeah, I'm just going to edit, render, upload. I probably got stuff I really should get done today, but I do what I can. And hopefully you'll do what you can. So uh, yeah, have a good one. I just suddenly remembered the name of a cosmic horror. I couldn't remember the name of one of my cosmic horrors yesterday, and I told my subconscious, please remember what the name of this is, and just as I was leaning forward, the name Kadiran popped into my head. That was the name of the cosmic horror that I couldn't remember. Thank you, subconscious, for delivering. <laughs> and you were present. <laughs> Our brains are so weird. <laughs>